darlings. We are in the suburbs and you know what that means. We've been uh, out thrift shopping, of course. This is the best place, in my opinion, to go thrift shopping. Generally, I would say the suburbs of Denmark is amazing for thrift shopping. And I'm gonna show you a few of the things that I found this time around. We do go to a few different thrift shops. So we go to the regular, you know, Red Cross um, thrift shops, but we also go and visit some antique stores and um, um, antique malls, I think you call it. So it's more like a thrift shop, but where private people, they have different little booths. And uh, I've spotted out some good ones that I keep coming back to because they just have great stuff every time. And I mean, we come here maybe once a month or something like that. So most of the things are switched out by the time that we come back, but we definitely have some favorite um, little shops around here. I've always loved thrift shopping and secondhand shopping. I think you get so much more value for your money. I think the quality oftentimes is a lot better than if you go out and you find something new, especially when it comes to interior design. In this area where we are in the plant house in the suburbs of Denmark, the demographic is mostly uh, senior citizens. So what you can find in the thrift shops are most of the time things that people have collected for a very long time. So if you think about your grandparents' generations, there was much more of a um, culture of collecting, of getting something really special. You wouldn't switch out your plates, for example. Every five years you would have one set of plates and take really good care of it for the rest of your life. So it was more like an investment when that generation went out and bought something and they would prioritize really good craftsmanship, really good brands too, especially here in Denmark because we have such a culture for craftsmanship and Danish produced items for your home. So that's what you'll find in the thrift shop. And you can get really lucky just in a regular uh, Red Cross thrift shop. But of course, if you go to an antique mall or an antique store, what you will find there is a lot more curated. What I look for when I go thrift shopping is mostly natural materials, handcrafted things, of course, anything that's crystal related. So for interior, that would also mean marble, travertine, alabaster, granite. Those things are quite expensive if you go out and buy them from new today, but you can you know, get some in H&M and those places. But I just find that some of the older things are more well-crafted and the materials are better. So I found a few stone items that I'm going to take back to Copenhagen with me. One of them is this beautiful alabaster candle holder for a table candle, a tapered, tapered candle. I love these things and I haven't seen a piece like this before. Just personally, because I love surrounding myself with natural materials, I love having these everyday items in stone, opposed to ceramic or glass. So whenever I can find something made out of stone, I'm definitely gonna grab it. In this area, it's very common to go on vacation to especially Egypt, but also Morocco. So my best guess is that this is some, something that someone brought home from one of those trips. And you can see a lot of that also going around in the thrift shops here, like little souvenir pieces. Beautiful, beautiful piece. I can't wait to get it home to the apartment. Then I found another piece, and I think that's a similar story. That is probably someone who found this on a holiday trip. I love these types of materials because you can get alabaster in a variety of different colors. This honey tone, I'm especially really enthusiastic about. I think it's so beautiful and muted and natural looking. And I do have like a little, what do you call that? A goblin, I think you would call it, back home in uh, Copenhagen. And I use that for just having salt uh, right next to the stove. So I'm gonna give you all the prices by the end of the video. 
of everything because the great thing about this is also that it's extremely affordable. If you were to buy items like these in Copenhagen, they would be much more expensive. The country really is divided up uh, like that here in Denmark, the city and the suburbs, and uh, they serve different purposes. They have different demographics, very different value systems also. So um, yeah, but that's the fun thing about traveling around that you can find these special items in the right places. This plate is, this is just a marble plate this was known as Carrera Marble back when I was growing up and I'm not sure that it's actually Carrera Marble because a lot of um, these types of items, they have a little label that says made in Taiwan. So yeah, but it's definitely a stone plate and this was so popular in the 80s, this uh, material, this marble material. What I use these for, because I have a few others of these, is for a serving, but it's also as a cutting board. I really want to switch out as much as possible of plastic items in my kitchen, especially uh, where I cook. So having natural materials, stone materials is so ideal for me. So those are coming back with me to Copenhagen. And I have one more thing that's coming back too. And it is this little basket thing. This could be something that someone brought home from Bali. It's a natural material and I particularly love having natural materials back in Copenhagen because we live in the city. There's a lot of steel and glass and concrete and we don't live as closely with nature as we do when we're here in the plant house. What I'm gonna use this one for is as a vase so I'm going to put in a glass jar, a container or a cylinder vase you could put into something like this and um, have flowers or dried flowers or whatever I want to have in this one. We have quite a few of these types of like unique baskets. We use them for a bunch of and we use them for a bunch of different things uh, all around the house. I'm home alone with Anga today by the way so if you hear her a little noise that's him. We're probably later gonna do a little bit of gardening um, and then I my parents are coming over for brunch so I'm gonna set up the table. <laughs> Andreas he is out uh, trekking with his mom today and uh, we're probably gonna do a little bit of seed sowing. It's still early at the moment um, for seed sowing but I want to get some things in the ground now. For example, I have a wreath and I have some weeds that I want to get in the ground. So the wreath was one that I made this summer from weeds that I had grown in the garden. And the cool thing about this wreath is that you can basically just put it in the ground and it's going to grow right back up. That's a really cool thing about just using natural materials. There are no wires or anything like that, so you can just put the whole thing in the ground and it's gonna grow back up. One thing that I found um, in, in the thrift shop was actually these garden tools. I really love garden tools that look like this, that have a little bit of patina, it's a little bit crooked, but especially because they have this wood handle. These are, um, I wouldn't necessarily say overpriced, but they're pretty pricey if you go and buy them from new. For some reason, there's a lot of plastic tools like these going around. I just find that they're not as good as these ones and they're not as beautiful. So whenever I can find beautiful garden tools like these secondhand, it is such a win and these, they cost me next to nothing. Then I found, <laughs> this is also so random. When we're here in the plant house, one thing that we all love doing is uh, creative stuff so painting and drawing whatever we feel like doing right and i just found these they're completely new haven't been used uh, <laughs> one is a little bit crooked as you see but doesn't matter and i think these are also the types of things that you can find in the first shop and it just makes sense to buy it 
there instead of getting it from new. You can buy lots of these like random objects that you need to have anyway. So that was a, a cool little find. Okay. Um, then I found a few wooden pieces. So all of this is for the plant house. And uh, I got this teak wooden bowl, really beautiful condition. I love having these natural materials around me. I love them for food, for serving. And I also got this little teak spoon here that I'm just going to use as a sugar spoon or a salt spoon or something like that, right? I mean, why not just find things like these in the thrift shop secondhand? It is so much more sustainable, it's much more beautiful, much more affordable, natural materials. So it's just a win all the way around, in my opinion. One thing that I collect here in the plant house is green glass and especially green glass from the 60s and 70s. They're from a particular company, a Danish company that makes these really sculptural, beautiful glass bowls and vases. I have a new vase also that I want to show you or a new, a new old vase that I'm going to show you later. I didn't bring it out. However, I also found two little candle holders. This is by another brand, also a Danish brand. High quality, great quality. So if you don't live in Denmark and you think about Danish design, minimalistic design, this is, um, this is what it is. And then also I found these little coasters for the candle holders. <laughs> I have a lot to show you, so I'm gonna go through it a little bit quickly. So everything I just showed you was 383 kroners. That's $56 for Danish design, marble, alabaster, crafted objects, practical objects. You couldn't really go out and find a whole lot for $56 in a store, even if you went to Ikea or H&M or Sara Home, right? It makes so much sense for me to buy my things this way and that's why I want to share it with you. It makes sense for sustainability reasons, ethical reasons, aesthetic reasons. So I really want to encourage all of you guys to check this out. But I have more to show you because one thing that I also collect here for the plant house is green marble. And this is something that I would never go out and buy from new in any case, but I love whenever I can find these little practical objects like this marble box that I don't know yet what I'm going to use for, but you can of course use it for jewelry, you could even use it for salt or sugar or something like that. Right now it's in the kitchen. Then I also found these really cool books and this is something that you can definitely find in thrift shops. These are vintage Disney books about animals. These are from 61 and I just think they're so cool. It's kids books. They're in Danish and Anga, he just started reading. So I think they're going to be so perfect and so aesthetically pleasing to look at too as well. Yeah, so beautiful covers. Let me just show you the insides. So I love the patina on books like these. That you can see like the colors have changed. There's something really authentic about that, right? Animal life for Anga to go through whenever he's in the mood to read a little bit about animals, lots of pictures. But I just love the fact that it's vintage Disney books. Another new addition that we got for the plant house was also a project that we did this summer and it was a flower pressing. Anga and I, we did it over the summer solstice, I believe. Went out to find some different wild flowers and pressed them and then we put two of, some of them into to some frames and I want to show you that. I hope you can see this. Maybe you can see it. But this is just such a cool way of pressing your flowers and preserving your flowers. Maybe this one is easier to see. I think actually, I think I'm gonna do the same thing with some of the herbs from the garden and then do a little herb gallery wall in the 
back in Copenhagen. Well, anyway, we'll see if I have time to do that. <laughs> so if you're longer, he's getting a little bit impatient. Um, maybe it's time for some hot chocolate. I'm running a little bit out of time now, so I think it's about time to get some hot chocolate, get outside, plant some seeds, and then I will show you the table decor because I also got some new porcelain stoneware for the plant house. It's also a vintage collection, but it's really pretty and it was really, really <laughs> affordable too. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little wholesome video about thrift shopping and decor and, <laughs> you know, seats and all of that stuff that we do when we're here in the plant house. This is, a, you know, spirituality applied. I like to do videos that are really um, complex and uh, when it comes to spirituality, I love talking about crystals, of course, and spirituality in that way. But I also think there should be space for applied spirituality, which means buying sustainable, buying ethical, living with nature, those kinds of things. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to like, share and subscribe. It helps me to know what you guys want me to talk about, but it also helps others to find this video if that is what they're looking for. And I want to wish you the most amazing day with so much love to you and to yours. Mm -hmm.